dumpsters when they did they all it seems like, like two one eighty five is a mess. They do, but they probably don't always they don't they don't always they're they not the stuck. Size. Welcome to the planning board meeting for uh, Monday, April 24th, 2017. We'd like to uh, thank uh, HCAM, uh, one for uh, televising uh, the meeting today, and also for these uh, wonderful digs that we seem to be uh, enjoying uh, with the town hall uh, still under repair. So uh, the uh, agenda tonight is pretty short. We have two major items on there. We have a discussion of the proposed stormwater bylaw by our DPW director, and we'll have an informal discussion of a proposed open space subdivision on Saddle uh, Hill Road. Uh, for the planning board members, we have posted the first night of town meeting as a planning board session. Uh, I don't envision at this point that we're going to meet it, but it's just there in case some emergency comes up that we need a vote of the board between now and town meeting. We'll probably be checking your email, say five o'clock or so on that Monday night, and we will probably be canceling it at that point. And we do have to meet sure. the meeting room 252 or 254. 254 in the- Town hall? Middle school. It would be a classroom. We're in town hall for a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So basically, uh, I don't know if, if anyone needs to do business with our land use group. They're up in the training room all together up there on, on the second floor uh, of the fire station. It's kind of cozy quarters. It's fairly easy when you make a phone call in and the phone gets answered and you ask normally what was Jen in, they don't have to look for her in her office because she's sitting right in front of them. So it's, uh, can't hide anymore. Can't hide, <laughs> can't hide anymore in, 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 in there. So anyway, let's uh, get started with the first item, which is a discussion of a proposed uh, stormwater bylaw by uh, John Westerling, the uh, DPW director. John? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies, gentlemen, I've been before you before to talk about the proposed uh, illicit discharge detection and elimination. Um, what you have before you this evening is a revised version of the one that you've previously seen. The components are essentially the same. Um, the purpose is the same, which is non-stormwater discharges into the municipal storm drain system can harm water quality and create public health hazards. The purpose of chapter 171, which is this chapter, is to provide for the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens of the town of Hopkinton through the regulation of non-stormwater discharges into the municipal storm drain system. And chapter 171 is to be administered as to, number one, prevent pollutants from entering the municipal storm drain system. Number two, prohibit illicit connections and illicit discharges into the municipal storm drain system. Number three, comply with the requirements of the town's National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System, or NPDES, permit for discharges from the municipal storm drain system, and number four, ensure compliance through inspection, monitoring, and enforcement. And the reason that this was uh, redrafted, it was redrafted by town council, and town council looked at our initial draft and they have a lot of experience with getting the Attorney General's approval on these IBDE bylaws. So Town Council uh, redrafted it. And again, it's basically the same components. What it's designed to do is to prevent connections, illicit connections and illicit discharges into the storm drain system, thereby keeping our drain system, our wetlands and our streams cleaner. Uh, this does uh, a little better job at identifying what an illicit discharge is. Uh, and if you will, on the second page, which is identified as page 36 here, illicit discharges, any direct or indirect non-stormwater discharge, including dumping into the municipal storm drain system, 
except that the following non-stormwater dischargers shall not be considered illicit dischargers. So these are basically the exemptions. And there's a bunch of them here. I'll just highlight some of them. Uh, Waterline flushing, landscape irrigation, uh, rising groundwaters, uncontaminated groundwater infiltration. It goes on and on, which you can see. Uh, and then it goes into discharges associated with dye testing and then discharges permitted under the National Pollutant Discharge uh, Elimination System. So this is the, the newest version. Again, town council approved, town council drafted. And with that, I'll answer any questions, Mr. Chairman. Yes, please. To the chair. Go ahead. Cliff. Um, can, John, can you tell me in the recent history or dating back any history, um, of any cases within that a time frame that have been pointed to this being an issue? I don't know that I have any through you, Mr. Chairman, in the my six years here. Um, so none, none, none come immediately to mind. There, there are some practices like there's somebody on Thayer Heights and or blueberry or somewhere in my neighborhood that seems to put bags of uh, dog uh, waste into the storm drains and they pop out on the big pipe that goes under my land and into a stream and on the sides of the stream are all sorts of plastic bags some partially filled some whatever and you know it it's that's something that's probably going to get picked up and then somebody's going to have to figure out how we're going to do that. Maybe it'll be a notification and public education that basically catch basins are no longer or are no, not trash receptions. Which is, which is very, very good to, the point, to that point that they aren't and they shouldn't be and no one should ever take that for granted that they are. Um, but outside the, of that scope, unless we're doing dog blood tests and DNA comp comp uh, composition, that would be a long road to hoe in order for us to, to mitigate a, a continued um, investigation into that. Secondly, is my question about this whole IDEE is that we are going in front of a, a new potential board of planning board next month. <clears throat> we are a board that has been doing our due diligence to do the best we can on the master plan. We have done numerous things to create um, better things for the, for, the, for the town itself. The state is mandating that we do this. I want it to be known that in order for us to do that, that our purpose as the board is to incite intention for people outside the board to be aware of this. I don't think that we've, we've given that credence. I think that we're, we're in the 11th hour of, of a board change and that this should not move forward until we get a solid board that is that is resonating the issue and the in the voice of the people. Can and I address that point? I, yeah. I actually have a question, but go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead. Go ahead. Right. Point. Uh, let me remind our, the petitioners: you were on the board for one hour, and you were able to select Mr. Cerulli to join our board. You had one hour of experience. You've had a whole year of experience, and now all of us have been on this board for at least a year. I think we're qualified to make a decision on this. Abs I, I, I never said we, we, that we weren't. I'm saying that right now, we have just pushed ahead. Well, hold on, please. I don't think it's pushing. Well, we, we, have, we have put forth a lot of changes going in the master well, plan. Well, first of all, Cliff, we're not sponsoring this. This is uh, being sponsored by the It's state mandated. I understand that. And, and, that's where and, 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 and then, so they're sponsoring it. This is a state and federal mandate. Yep. I mean, the feds could come down to the state. The state has signed an agreement. What does it say at the top of our letter right here <coughs> to us? If anyone were to, to read that to me, please. 
To what? To, to seek. We are, we are, the planning board, so items on the right. agenda. The board will discuss about the proposed stormwater. Since we have uh, seen it in, in at least, what in last, wait, excuse me. John Westling, Westling asked to meet with the board to have a discussion about proposed stormwater bylaws. Since you have, um, since you have seen it last, there have been some changes. Now, the town, the, to see if the town will vote to amend the, the general bylaws of the town of Hopkinton as followed. Now, that is the town. We are the board. So Cliff, we're not Cliff, being asked so to vote on anything tonight, Cliff. Right. So this Cliff, is what you're going to vote on in town meeting. And if right, you want to so have the discussion as to whether the town should adopt it, that's a town meeting vote. We are just getting a courtesy visit from our DPW director. Partly we are courtesy record visit is because we are, I believe, the appellate board if somebody wants to appeal an enforcement officer. And you know that's so what is the that's purpose the role of us, of us doing this tonight then it's, it's to inform the ci citizens of what's coming up in another week I, and, and that's I, it i have a question for the uh, mr westerling uh, concerning the actual uh, written uh, statement in front of us could i sure go ahead uh, okay on uh, page four uh, section uh, c and d uh, these are under the enforcement orders uh, i just want a little bit of clarification uh the sentence reads if a violator fails to comply come into compliance by the deadline specified in the enforcement order, the DPW may do the work necessary to resolve the violation at the joint and several expense of the violator, which I'm assuming is some legal wording that I'm not familiar with. Um, but the problem I have is and property owner. Um, because I, as I understand it, this uh, change gives you a little bit more teeth to deal with the source of a problem. And what if the source of the, source of the problem like in Mr. Wisemantle's example, he's not the source of the problem, but it's ending up on his property. So uh, could we have wording that says the source, uh, the property owner or the source of the infraction? Or, 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 or at that point, is it already identified elsewhere in the document? I just don't understand the legal terms for it. Through you, Mr. Chairman, the purpose of this is illicit detection so it's up to us. We can't just say, well, there's, there's in, in the case that the chairman shared, there's a, there's a bag of dog feces on your property. We have to find where that came from. Right. We have to follow that all the way upstream until we can find the source. Uh, so it's not the property owner where we find it, and it's not the outfall of a culvert, because that culvert may lead upstream to miles of drainage pipe, to acres and acres of uh, contributory uh, subcatchment area. So it, that's, that's part of the problem with this EPA new permit, is that it puts the requirement to uh, detect and then to eliminate. So to the, the question that was raised earlier, how many times has this been cited? Well, I don't know, we, we, we don't go out, we don't sample the, the effluent of our drainage system. This requires us to sample that, to detect it, to find the source, and to eliminate that source. So is it, I think, a fair assumption that this is more of an incremental change and it does give us more authority, but uh, it may be impossible sometimes to determine the source of brake fluid or oil or 90 pounds of waste. Yeah, through, through you, Mr. Chairman, if, if we found a, a pollutant in a stream, it would be incumbent on us today through the Board of Health, through the Conservation Commission, to find out the source of that pollutant. Uh, what this a little bit more teeth. This, this, what this does is it actually puts a requirement for not only finding the source of pollutants, but to first go out and sample all the effluents to see if there is a pollutant there to monitor the outflows at both low flow and high flow of groundwater. So it's, it's not necessarily more teeth, it's, it's more responsibility on the community's part to go out and check that water to see if it's in compliance with, with all the regulations. So Thank you. You're welcome. Right. What you just had to say sounds like it could be costly. It is. <laughs> so, I mean, we the taxpayers end up bearing that cost. Yes. So to what extent do you, do you 
do your due diligence and, and do your investigation. Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, last year, the town of Hopkinton is one of 31 communities, Central Massachusetts Regional Stormwater Coalition, and we work very closely with, uh, with engineers and with state regulators. And the engineer that we had hired as that coalition came out to Hopkinton and actually estimated what it would cost the differential between what we currently do for uh, stormwater, which includes catching, uh, excuse me, cleaning catch basins, sweeping the streets, uh, cleaning out culverts and swales, what we currently do versus what will be required under this new permit, which includes not only those items, but also sampling the water, inspections at low flow and high flow, um, changes in regulations, uh, and they showed an incremental increase, which, which we put into our operating budget last year. And you'll have to forgive me, I don't have that number, but it was, it was in the order of magnitude of over $200,000. So, and that's, that's just to comply with the regular standard requirements of the new permit. Is, under, this, and, is this standard requirement? Uh, under NPDES. So if we, if we find a pollutant, that could lead to cleanup costs, mm -hmm. to legal costs, to repair costs. Bas basically, every town at this point is struggling with this new requirement. I mean, I'm in the regional group, and, you know, they're all concerned about it, and they all know it's going to cost a lot, and this is where the federal government has come down and says the next step to clean up streams and water, you've got to start sampling all the sources that make up the streams and water, and you got to do a better job of cleaning them up. And that's, yeah. So, uh, Fran? Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, John, the $100 and $300 fines that are mm -hmm. identified in there, are those arbitrary numbers? Are those numbers substantial enough to act as a deterrent to Goes I mean, daily, I believe. Yeah, and a hundred dollars a day. If you're a big company, <laughs> peanuts. Right. It's but a round if you're a homeowner, what the? Yeah, through, well, well, through the chair. Is it a please. is it a deterrent? I don't know. If you're if you're a big corporation, uh, I don't know that that would be a deterrent enough to stop. But between the IDDE bylaw, with uh, conservation commission, and board of health, and uh, if necessary, DEP and EPA getting involved. Once it's identified and the source is identified, I don't think it's a deterrent so much as those folks coming together and ensuring that the pollutant stops and then it becomes cleaned up. So is that a deterrent? Not necessarily. I mean, one, one of the practices that happened in Hopkinton when they basically put the storm sewer on Pleasant Street is, and this is decades ago, I mean, uh, a bunch of, bunch of years ago, the rumor is that they left the trench open so that everyone could connect their sanitary line to that storm drain. And because they had, you know, the septic systems weren't working so well. And those of us that remember downtown Hopkinton pre sewer in the summertime, it was kind of ripe. And, uh, you know, right behind the, the Exxon station, behind the post office, is kind of the outfall of that whole bit. And, you know, it was not pleasant being in downtown Hopkinton in the early 80s. But we fixed that by connecting everyone properly to, to the sanitary sewer. That isn't to say there isn't still an mm -hmm. old connection somewhere still All in somebody's backyard. You know, you just don't know. Through the chair. This is interesting. There are actually companies out there that have dogs that you hire mm -hmm. and they come out to your community and they sniff the catch basins looking for fecal contamination. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you can hire as part of your inspection. You can have the dogs come out and sniff and, and if you find coliform bacteria or, or any other pollutants in there, again, it's, it's the town's requirement to track that back upstream. And that's why we have to have mapping to identify all the catch basins, all the outfalls, all the contributory areas, so that if we find if we find a hit, we then know where to work upstream. Last couple. Yeah. One of the uh, not considered or the charges uncontaminated pumped groundwater. Are you saying someone with a 
sump pump in their basement could pump into a storm drain by law? That's what this appears to say. That's what I thought. And the other question really quickly is, um, in your detective work or your sampling, it appears, based on Ken's analysis, you probably will have to go into people's yards or into areas that are owned by residents. Is there a uh, letter that would go out prior to that, or is it something where you would just show up <coughs> and during your detective phase, you could actually have to go onto a property without any warning or notice? How is that going to be handled by the DPW? Through the chair, that's an excellent question. The majority of our drainage discharge points have easements associated with them, and that gives the town the right to enter into that easement for uh, maintenance or other investigatory actions but we wouldn't we wouldn't propose to access anyone's property even if we had an easement without first giving them prior notice even during the detective process yes I have one more comment yeah. okay. uh, I, I have one of these easements and that's that's how it's written um, we're talking about you know small things but there are also larger superfine cleanup sites in town uh, that the state monitors because they're issues is one going from uh, South Street towards and under um, Lumber Street uh, things like that that are already identified uh, wouldn't fall under this but uh, this is the kind of uh, regulation that would help future issues not get to that scale where they can reach thousands of feet away from the source mm -hmm. um, and cover acres of land um, so I, I'm all for this, and I appreciate the homework that you, you put into everything you do, uh, Thank professionalism. You. Um, I'd like to motion that the board uh, supports this uh, on the floor of town meeting. Motion is in order. Is there a second? I second. Second. Okay. Motion second. Further discussion? I have a question. Go ahead. What would happen, <coughs> I, I agree this is a good thing, and um, since it's mandated by the state, what would happen if the town voted it down? Through the chair, we have to we have to submit a notice of intent to the Environmental Protection Agency this fall, and part of that notice of intent requires us to have an IDDE bylaw in place. If we don't have that in place, then we're in violation of our first year of the permit, and that would do two things. I think number one, it would put us under a microscope for future activities that the town does. Uh, we have to do annual reporting. They would scrutinize that more closely than they already do. And then I'm sure that EPA and DEP working in conjunction would bring down uh, orders of noncompliance and potential fines. So I don't know what path that would be. Right. It's not a pretty path. And right. I prefer to follow what the, Makes sense. the requirements are. Good question. Are we ready for a vote? I think we are. All those in favor of supporting this at town meeting floor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Abstain. Oh, anyone abstain? Okay. Thank you all. Sure. Thank, Thank you, John. John. Time. Thanks for your hard work. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you, John. Okay, let's see. Let's move on to the second item of our agenda, and that is an informal discussion. Uh, Saddle Hill <coughs> Road. This is a proposed open space uh, landscape uh, development subdivision. On Saddle Hill Road, and uh, I believe the proponents are all here. So if you can come on up, drag another chair or two up with you to the to the speaker's table. Okay. A point of order. Yes. Um, I live in Saddle Hill Road, about two miles away. Uh, this is an informal discussion, right. so I'm. Yep. This is not. Yeah. And even that, you're you're far enough away. I think that you're not a formal butter at all. So no. it, uh, the uh, I uh, point of yeah, uh, um, I live. John Parsons is a is a, a butter of mine that lives down at um, has owns 35 Parkwood and I'm an, um, adjacent to him. Okay. So I would like to know if I need to. I think you might want to, because because you have the property right next to his, you might want to sit and listen from the audience yeah. clip. All right. So I, I will do that okay. at this time. Okay, so let me just give you everyone a little quick update. Uh, they have submitted a uh, application for the special permit under the open space landscape 
preservation uh, development bylaw. And the hearing will be started on the 22nd of May. Uh, and this is really just a introduction. This is not a formal hearing. No decisions will be made, but you may get some comments and feedback. Uh, there might be a couple people in the audience that are interested in, in what's going on. And uh, it's really kind of an informal discussion today just to let us know what, what you're thinking and where you're coming. And if we can steer you a little bit informally, uh, recognizing that uh, three of the members of the board will not be back for sure, maybe it'll be four. Uh, but uh, anyway, it's all yours. Sure. Uh, my name is John Parsons. I'm with Parsons Commercial Group, based in Framingham. To my left is Victor Galvani, my partner on the project. To my right is Chuck Joseph, who will be marketing the project for us. And I'm going to turn over to Victor. He'll talk a little bit about what we have planned, and we appreciate any feedback. Sure. So um, as uh, you folks may know, this is a 60-acre parcel off of Saddle Hill. Um, according to the bylaw, we had to uh, propose an open space, uh, which we have done, which I think is in, uh, in that plan set. Um, we also have an A&R plan uh, that we're showing. Um, we went in front of CONCOM um, probably about a month ago now and uh, got the ANRAD plan um, set. So wanted to talk to you folks a little bit about uh, what we were thinking um, you know, for this and kind of go through what we viewed as the uh, pros and cons of uh, both plans. So the, I guess I'll start maybe with the, with the open space plan. Number is that like L four? L four. Thank you. Uh, so the open space plan that we have, and I apologize early here, our uh, engineer couldn't be with us today, so um, I'll do my best to sort of navigate what he's done to date. But um, this plan um, meets the guidelines set forth um, uh, for the open space bylaw. The some of the pros and cons that we saw from this, this road um, is 2,329 feet. Um, one of the challenges that we have with this parcel is it's kind of a little bit of a pork chop and <coughs> all of the, uh, you know, sort of rather than a, a rectangle, what have you, um, <coughs> the uplands that you're gaining are just really on the corners. There's a lot of wetlands out in the back. so. About 50% of this um, this land will be preserved, you know. I guess you know anyway. Um, this is showing 18 lots. Um, again, the road is 2,329 square feet. Some of the drawbacks, as as we saw them, um, our conventional plan, the road is about 511 feet uh, shorter than it is in the open space. So. Um, obviously, from a stormwater perspective and um, an impervious perspective, uh, we think the other plan is a bit better than the conventional plan. Um, we also shot to uh, use the same similar open space that we have here, uh, running along um, Saddle Hill Road, creating a buffer um, for those homes. Uh, we're going to do something similar on the, uh, the conventional plan, um, or the, the hybrid plan as we're calling it. Um, the uh, again the way the parcel is is shaped and, and you know trying to I guess fit this fit this in here uh, the open space plan five of the houses are actually within the hundred foot buffer um, and the conventional plan we don't have any that are in the uh, the buffer zone so obviously we think that that's a uh, a big plus. Um, with these houses being so concentrated in, in sort of this one northerly area here, um, we're concerned about wells and uh, possibly creating a yield issue. And um, I guess the last part being uh, sewage and the, the septic and the wells and how tight they are 
it could create a nitrogen loading situation. We may have to have some consideration somewhere else on this site to, uh, to handle that. So those are kind of some of the concerns that we have um, on the open space plan, you know, versus the, uh, let's, the conventional let's, let's plan. Let's continue to talk about the open space one for a second before yeah. you go on. Yep. What, what if you took the southernmost entrance to it and lined it up with Palomino Drive and then created some lots on both sides of the road? Number one, it would reduce the road length. And two, it would, well, it would reduce the road length. And, you know, like, like lot eight and lot nine would then be, I'll say, on the south side of the new road. Mm -hmm. And it would open it up a little bit. I think when you scrunch them down, I think what ends up happening, um, my understanding when we were developing the open space plan is because we need a certain amount of uplands, it, when we move that road in closer, uh, my understanding was that we weren't going to uh, conform to the upland piece. We weren't able to achieve it. I, I, I'm having a hard time kind of understanding that necessarily. And Given the Mr. Chairman, maybe what, drop this back the, in and flip those up. I what's your logic in, in, in this line of inquiry? Well, I think the board normally prefers the open space type plan, and, and it sounds like you're kind of jumping over that aspect of it. So I think we would usually try to encourage you to make the open space plan work. The I like the fact that you've got the buffer side on Saddle Hill Road at 100 feet so that, you know, even in today's no leaves on the trees, you're still going to go by and you're basically going to see a kind of a wooded property. Right. And right. I think that's one of the benefits of an open space plan at this particular site. I mean, you know, it's a fairly long stretch of road that, you know, I don't think anyone would like to see, say, the a and type plan where there's driveway after driveway after driveway there. And, you know, and, and I did jump ahead on the conventional one, and quite frankly, it, it's n it, it doesn't appear to me to be perhaps as good. But I can see where you've got basically two sections of road going in there where you only have houses on either side of them. And, uh, you know, it's I also don't necessarily like having a roadway that's coming out and its headlights are pointing right at another person's house, per se. I mean, you're going to always have turning on a corner lot, but, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's kind of, it just seems to me that if you line that up there, you can still get the same number of lots in, because uh, it is all, up, all upland at that point. And I agree with that recommendation. Well, I, you know, I don't know whether it's working, but this is informal. Yeah, yeah. So yeah no, and before, before you spend a lot of time and certainly have the engineer take a take a look at it and try to line them up. I mean, uh, I, if you've got houses that are inside the hundred foot, that would be some way that you might think of realigning a little bit in order to try to get stuff out of there. Because I'm not sure that that ends up being the absolute best design. I also have to figure out what to do with the detention basin since we can't stay on the open space. The one opposite lot two? Yes. Can we just not waive that? I thought at Heinz Ridge you waived. I thought it's been waived in the. In the I, 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 believe, I believe we. I believe passed. we can waive that. I'm okay. not. I'm not 100 percent sure, but. I'll go back and look. But I just read that it wasn't allowed, so I'll go back and look. I think it's not allowed, but but it's. That is a way to wave, 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 yeah. Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Are there any trails in here that are being uh, disrupted? I saw a partial, looks like some type of path. But yeah, it's an old There's a, like a that logging that road. Is yeah. that, what, um, is that what it is? And then it kind of goes towards the back of the property where the, the wetlands uh, begin and it's it terminates. Does it? So there's really, there's really no paths or trails? Well, there's really a real defined trail that cuts through here. Right. Well, there is. Um, at least up until the point where the neighbors had where the horses moved, there's a horse trail uh, right around where the street, so the southern side, side, and the hybrid plan goes through. Which, which, uh, what about what lot? Give us the reference point. Uh, uh, 
That's not the one off a of lot nine. Between it 14 and 13? Yeah, he said 13. Yeah, so. Hybrid L5, yes. Yeah, that's the old, that's the old right. logging room. Yeah. That was originally a logging room. They may have taken horses through there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the road I, that's the yeah. Yeah, I mentioned earlier. Yeah. So to you, Mr. Chair, I, I know we're talking about the details of the open space plan, but there's three, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, there's three plans in front of us. So can you kind of summarize? Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, kind of a summary in well, order. Let's, let's, let's kind of go, go Let's go to the next one, and then maybe we'll come back. Come back for details. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Thank you. And, and maybe just an opinion about the, your being the applicant, which one you would prefer. Sure. Yeah. The next plan that you have in front of you is the is L three, correct? Yeah, we got them all. But yeah, L five. L five is the hybrid. L five is the hybrid. L three is the conventional. Okay. Um, so L five um, is the hybrid. This is where we looked at trying to create um, a situation where we were trying to achieve a, a little bit of both, trying to sort of blend the. Uh, the conventional in the open space plan. So we we gave some open space over where in between lot one and lot two, and then had the proposed no cut landscape easement that's 50 feet um, that runs similarly um, to the open space plan in the middle in between the two um, cuts in the in uh, Saddle Hill Road and then out towards uh, below uh, lot 13. And. I think in the open space, it's out to 100 feet. I think there's some areas here we can make it a little bit, um, to potentially make that a little bit deeper. Um, I met with Jennifer br briefly on this informally, and um, I don't think we were too sure about what we could do with this, um, the top piece around lot six and lot uh, seven that may not be um, allowed by the town. So. Uh, the, the color plan that we actually brought in today, you know, shows that shows that going away if uh, if need be. If I could interject to, through the chair, and, and I'm assuming your, what your question was, uh, David's question was, starting with uh, the A and R plan on mm -hmm. L2, um, just for people that may or may not be watching at home, uh, it describes. Uh, Oh, 18 of 11 lots along the street, no side streets, and um, many acres of land for each property, and pretty much everything's away from the wetlands except for maybe one or two properties. Uh, and then as we move forward, so A and R means approval not required, uh, and that's a standard plan. And you want to do something more complex, which involves open space, which means you're donating a certain amount of space. Uh, for never to be developed on or for public use, uh, which is then shown in uh, L4. And there's two variations on that, L4 and L5, uh, and that's kind of yep. where we're at in, in yep. the discussion. So there are four yep, in the play, four in play. And there's different permutations of nearness to wetlands or not, and design issues that the chair is brought up. Through you, Mr. Chair, it does seem like L5 spreads out the houses a lot more. Um, like you mentioned, other than that little funny bump in the top left there, which is almost like a cul-de-sac, but kind of not really, right? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, if, if I can speak to this for a little bit, because we spent, the, obviously, we spent a lot of time working on these. G going back some 25, 30 years, when we developed the open space bylaw, this was when it first came into Hopkinton, Ron Rue, and a bunch of us were involved in that. and. The whole idea of that plan was to try to, there were two, there were two purposes to the plan, actually, the, the, the zoning. One was if there was an opportunity to provide public access to other open space land behind it or get some kind of access in there for passive recreation, that that would be, that would be an honorable thing to do and see if we could try to work this out with the developers. The second piece was to look at what made the most sense from an environmental standpoint, overall impact. 
And intuitively, when you look at a lot of open space plans, it's very clear, you say, well, we've got more open space that's not gonna be developed here. That must be better environmentally than doing something like this, a conventional plan, or a conventional hybrid plan. But if you look at the shape of this land and what's necessitated by the open space, we really have to create some significantly longer roadways, impervious surface, et cetera, to make the open space plan work. I don't, and I think that's an important consideration, but I don't think that's the main factor. I think the main factor is when you start getting into 30,000 square foot lots for homes of this size with well and septic, you do run into some tricky environmental issues with regard to nitrogen loading, spacing, et cetera. So while it may look on paper that this is a better environmental solution, if you look at the logic of why we developed the open space bylaw to begin with, it may not apply in this particular land configuration because of the way the roadways work out. These, these particular houses, if the only, the best example, I, there are two examples I can think of in town. Um, if you know Daniel Shea's road, which is further up the street here, that road was developed similarly to this, except it had ANRs on the road in between the two entrances of Daniel Shea's road. So you have five, six, seven driveways that come out in addition to that. This takes that away and simply puts a single loop road in and gives us a 50 to 75 foot permanent no-cut zone there, which would maintain the streetscape. Which, so sorry, which one takes that away? Which the, the conventional plan and the open space plan L4 and L5 okay. both take that away. Well, L5 does have lots on the street, right? No, all those are accessed off the road. One, uh, one two, and we three. Have, I'm sorry, uh, yes, we have I'm sorry. Some I'm, yes, on those. I'm, I'm looking, I'm sorry, I'm looking well, at most from of them, three though. down. Yeah, 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 yes. just a, right. right, understood. Um, so that was one example that just kind of struck me because it's sort of nearby and everything. The other was the, the plan that we did over on Cobbler's Way where along Clinton Street, we also provided a 50 foot no cut zone on that scenic road. So there were two similar, I mean, you can say Clinton and, and Saddle Hill are kind of similar. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the stone walls, the kind of pretty, pretty mature growth trees, et cetera. So when we look at this, I, I look at the open space plan, L4, and, and intuitively I look at it and say, well, that's maintaining more open space. That must be better for the environment. And then you start looking at how tight these houses are going to be with septics and wells. And probably, you know, you're looking at least four bedrooms on each one of these homes, so four bedroom septic systems minimally and you look at the length of the roadway, and you start to step back and say, what was the purpose of the open space bylaw when we put it into effect? I'm not sure that the conventional is more offensive to the environment than the open space. That's my only point. If I may, through the chair. Go ahead, Frank. Your logic that you just described can be resolved by having less buildings. So that's the answer to your question. That's what the open space bylaw provides less density. So you're saying, well, it would be too dense with 30,000 30, square foot lots, build less buildings. Well, I, I, would, I would disagree with you because I think the open space bylaw allows, allows yeah. you yeah. to provide w the same number of houses you can get in the conventional plan. And to that we actually end up losing a, a lot on the open space plan um, as opposed to the conventional plan, um, you know, the one that's proposed, and it's, it's still pretty tight. I was just going to make a point that there's really virtually no difference between the open space plan and the, and the hybrid because one has 19 houses and the other has 18. So, I mean, to me, your point about the open space makes sense because everything's roughly spread out the same. The, mm -hmm. the land that we end up giving back to, I don't know what level of, use the word, I, I don't know how well it, it can be utilized or, or you know, used. It, it, it's not locking into a trail system. We can't even really do one around the back of this. Um, you know, so I, I don't know what the necessarily the, the, I guess the net gain ends up being. But so for you, Mr. Chair, I just asked my question one more time because I don't no. think I've gotten an answer. Which one do you prefer? Oh, the hybrid plan. The hybrid plan. Yes, okay. the hybrid plan. Sorry, the hybrid plan. That, that's what we're looking for. Let's try. Mr. Chair, I have a question. Yep. So in the hybrid plan, you show. Um, let's go with. Call them, yeah, there are lots one, two, and three off of Saddle Hill and four even, uh, which is off of the new road. You don't show those on the open space plan. Why would you choose to build houses within the buffer of the wetlands when you could use that open space down there and then create the open space further north? So you're saying eliminate these lots? Bring them down 
so that you're no longer building within the buffer zone. Right, let me break them down. I'm not sure what you bring mean. Bring them down closer to Saddle Hill, down your new street across from Lot 1. I'm, 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 I'm lost. Yeah, I'm lost on that. So I know we're looking at one open space, two, and three. Is that what you're looking at on the conventional? I know. I think what he's saying no, is, why did he do that with five. that? I'm going between the L4 open, and L5. The traditional open space. On your open space plan, on oh, L4. Okay. Yep. Because I think we could. So instead of, I think we're trying to suggest that instead of putting all the houses so close together, why didn't you spread them out like you did on the head? Because plan? we have open space requirements. We have a certain amount of upland that we, we have, have to, to meet. But, the but my question plan. is, you're building these houses, you're showing these houses built within the 100-foot buffer zone. Lot 17. Oh, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Lot 18. Why yeah. wouldn't you move those down where you're no longer within the buffer zone? No, you're saying down here. Okay, yeah. I, I understand what you're saying. No, no let's take these. Down. Move them down here. That's something we. Mm, Good question. <laughs> that's other, something we may be able to do. The other question I invite the board to go look on Front Street where Cobbler's Way was there. And I know Fran and I yeah. were on the tree thing, and yeah. quite frankly, the buffer of 50 feet is not a short. Way, it's a short buffer. And yeah. 50 feet is the not houses, feet. houses are incredibly uh, visible from the street as opposed to what perhaps maybe the yeah. 100 foot would, would, would do. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm not sure the Cobbler Way 50 foot worked as well as everyone was hoping it would. The topography here I know goes from Saddle Hill Road and then sort of goes down a dip into the hill, so we can certainly talk to the engineer about what, um, you know, give some elevations on you know, what hot house box would, that may would that potentially look like. <coughs> What's the average square footage maybe the estimate for the houses? In the 3,500 square foot range. 3,500. I think that might be, that's, I think that's a little bit less than the houses on uh, Copperstone, right? Oh yeah, yeah. a lot less. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mr. Chairman, so, question yeah. for the group on L four on the uh, open space. Yeah. One that open space area, uh, that kind of is that a hundred foot deep? Uh, it doesn't really necessarily mark it out. It's the two point five, two point seven acres. Yeah, the two point yes. seven. Is that's it about a hundred feet? That's a hundred feet. Yeah, that's what I thought. And is and I, I we would not want to rule out in a hybrid. I don't. I don't know if we could go to a hundred. But we might be able to go with 75. Yeah, there's some areas we can, I think we can push it in a little bit further. There's also, Mr. Chairman, there's also the possibility that uh, we could voluntarily intersperse evergreens within that buffer yeah, to further nice. the visual, to lessen the visual impact. We wouldn't be clear cutting them beforehand. I mean, there's there's many hundred foot tall trees, hundred foot tall trees. Yeah. There's, a lot of, there's a lot of pines and oaks in there. So you know, I could see the open space plan with with a path parallel to Saddle Hill because you, you know you're never going to be Saddle Hill Road is not a road that I would like to uh, walk on. I'll say, I'm sure people oh, do. It's, do, it's, it's but tight. it's 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 a very narrow road and uh, certainly wasn't laid out to today's standards. Uh, used to be a lot narrower, uh, but you know, I could see a, a walking path in that 100 foot buffer, albeit almost of like a sidewalk, you know, meandering path. You mean just in this section to go from here to yeah. here? Yeah, it's just part of it. I mean, it's. As as the town starts to get more and more sidewalky friendly, uh, yeah. I, I'd also like to see. Uh, I don't know if it's possible to have. If we were here in Proctor Street, if uh, maybe one side of the project can go out on Proctor Street, one side comes on Saddle Hill. Um, it's already a four-way, isn't it? No, no. no uh, aside from there, a separate. Oh, separate. Okay. And maybe some improvements on Proctor Street to make it safer, because uh, there's going to be extra traffic, and I'd like to see uh, well, maybe s safety brought into play here, improvements as part of the uh, part of the project. You're talking about the intersection. I I got a uh, phone call from a former planning board member today that talked about the.
Proctor Street number of accidents, and I'm trying to search back. I think my wife actually got hit right there at Proctor Street at one point or another. Close to home. I mean, uh, I can't, close to home. I can't remember back that far whether it was the exactly there or not. We used to have some friends on Proctor Street, and uh, it. Uh, so, I, I, Mr. Yeah, Chair, I just want to make a comment that I, I kind of like the hybrid plan because it does spread out the houses, and I think that people that buy those houses would really appreciate that. I know it would be less um, land for the town. I guess the only issue would be to solve that, that upper left there, but even if it removed one lot, it would be down to. 18 homes, which would be the same thing as the open space. Mm -hmm. um, does anybody see any problems with the, the hybrid? Say that again. Yeah. I'm sorry. The hybrid plan. I like it compared to the open space traditional plan because the houses are spread out a lot more. Yeah. And the road size is roughly the same. It's less. Less even. 500 feet less. It's 500 feet less. It's quite a bit shorter. Exactly. Is that conservation restriction? How much land that would be? That well, I don't think anybody's going to build anything behind that, right? They can't. It's right, oh, right. Wetland. So it's the value of wetland conservation restriction versus open space. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, go ahead. Yeah. It's no. Weird. So, so what I see uh, from David's uh, point is that it's a balance or a trade-off between conservation space and open space. Conservation space, which ne not necessarily could be used, versus open space where Kent's suggesting a walkway. Um, and I think I'm Ken's suggestion adds to the neighborhood, and I think conservation restriction is useful, but it's it's on it's on it's on basically swamp, so it's um, well that's going to get restricted anyway, mm -hmm. swamp to swamp, unless mm -hmm. somehow we really get into a drought. The the uh, the open space plan, you know, as you know, again the the houses are are going to be pretty close together, so. When we get in there to you know to to, you know, to develop it, you're looking at cutting down a lot of those trees. And um, as one of the board members noted, you know there's some big hundred foot trees out there that we're looking to try and preserve because we think it's going to enhance this development quite a bit. So um, it's going to be a lot more challenging to do it or any of it. Um, with the open space plan, given how close they are going to be together, because when you have the septics out in the back or the well in the front and any type of yard, I mean, these those houses are going to start getting get, getting pretty close. So, so the fair pay is three, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. The L five would allow you to keep more of the yeah. mature trees. Yep. No question about it. And if it makes sense to the board, based on what you're telling us tonight, if it's possible for us to increase the fifty foot no cut zone to something that we could come back to you with and say we're, we're at this and to provide an easement for a walking path along that no cut zone we, we, we tend to accomplish I think what Mr. Weissmantel was suggesting we're getting some foot traffic there I, again I, it's a, you know, we're, we'll get foot traffic from here to here but we're not going to solve oh, okay. Saddle Hill Road we're I understand I understand but yeah. you know, we step. like we like yeah. to do the little step. baby's best steps yeah. right I mean, yeah and we can do that on a voluntary basis as, again, part of a hybrid. Right. We, we have the, you know, the authority because we'll be setting up the deeds and everything to be able to do that. And, and, and I, I would hope that you come back with looking at an alternate layout on the, on the uh, open space so that <coughs> you bring kind of right in at Palomino Drive that one edge because I, I honestly think that takes a lot of road footage out of there. It still gives you the same number of lots. I don't <coughs> for the um, for the L five, Mr. Chairman. Or mm -hmm. L four. Well, can, can you do that for both the L five and the L four? Yes. No, because he's got lots on both sides that yeah. are really doing. You may end up with another A and R lot on the. Yeah, on right. as a maybe lot on thirteen would hybrid be hybrid piece. Right. Yeah, because that would probably drop. Twelve, twelve and thirteen, then maybe become. It'd be a, it'd be a and R's, and then well, if you're trying to loop it back like that, I don't know. I'll we'll have to just take a look at it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Question, sorry. No. Uh, sorry for the L5 plan. Since you guys sound like you're in a very giving mood now, <laughs> <laughs> um, the proposed walkway along Saddle Hill Road in that buffer area there, um, I, to me, 
actually continuing that to each end of the, the properties, including the houses, the, the A and R properties, would make sense because it would connect the entire neighborhood. Not the entire neighborhood, but mm -hmm. from end yeah. to end. So it's just something to think about that. when you're planning. Yeah. I don't think that's unreasonable. And we're, we're, I don't know what you guys think about, but I think here we're thinking about an impervious material on that path, not necessarily a paved. Uh, we don't want to add more impervious material on these. I'd like but to see impervious. Do you think it crushed or? or yeah, yeah. yeah, crushed. Yeah. I, the, I, the, the, crushed crush, the crushed stone mm -hmm. on cobblers also didn't work. I'm prefer you know that's gone. Asphalt, you guys, sidewalk. You, well, you I don't know. Direction. That's my personal well, opinion. Okay. Yeah. But uh, you, you know, we can. That's why we're paying. We're line paying line. a lot of money for the town to do that now. Yes. So you don't want a paved sidewalk and a no cut buffer zone uh, right there. Well, wow. depends right. how far off the road it would be, right? Asphalt right. through there. Right. That would not look good. I didn't think about it. The the town does do impervious or pervious sidewalk on Legacy. It's all pervious sidewalk. Pour your cup of coffee right through. Yeah, it was that you poured through. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. Makes both happy. Uh, one of the um, notes that the uh, engineer had left me about the um, open space piece was in regards to a uh, nitrogen aggregate plan and a deed restriction on portions of the open space in order to achieve four bedroom septics. My understanding, and again, he's not here, but the way the open space is and the way the houses are clustered, it, it's not going to allow for a well on a four bedroom septic system because it exceeds the 440 gallon per acre um, requirement. requirement. So it becomes a board of health issue. Um, so we have to look at, I guess, you know. Yeah, the whole picture has to come from Remediating that. Would that be something? It's just there, yeah. Yeah, I think that might go to DEP too. Like I'm not sure. Br uh, Brian Besso had looked at this plan, but he's out for a couple weeks. But um, he had looked at it and he did make <coughs> a comment to me, so he is aware that this would be an issue. Yeah. So yeah, they didn't really have a solution at right. the time, <laughs> but he did <laughs> so say it's going to be an issue. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was <laughs> what we got. If I could bring up a, with the chair, a, a solution, smaller buildings. All requirements that the face of land as it as it exists. Well, we we can definitely look at that. I think through the chair um, that at some point the economics will dictate that we just have to do an eight hour plan, which would you know, which we don't think would be the best use of this land, quite frankly. But well, as, as Mr. Uh, uh, Jobs uh, suggested, it is a 360 view, a lot of different departments, a lot of different angles, and then there'll be a solution. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Other comments, questions? Anyone from the audience that have any comments? Just from a process perspective, so the L5 plan, even though everybody's calling it a hybrid, is technically going to be a conventional plan. Yes. And so if that's the route that everybody's interested in, you would have to deny the special permit that's been applied for for them to proceed under the conventional. <coughs> Just keep that in mind. So even though there's open space, because it doesn't meet it the doesn't open meet space, the open space, space it's requirements. automatically drops it into conventional. That's correct. correct. So to that point, if you're asking from the audience, um, the 50 foot um, buffer there is significantly, like you had said, appropriate to what, what, what street did we say, Cedar? Cobbler. Cobbler. Cobbler in front. Cobbler. So, so we don't have we don't have that buffer there in that aspect of that as well. We have a buffer on, on, on Front Street, 50 feet. Yeah, and 50 feet. And it's kind of thin. porous. It's thin. I mean, right. you know. It's just, it just is. Yeah, it's just. Could I ask a question? Uh, I'm not sure if we actually addressed it all the way, but instead of having two connections to Saddle Hill, could there be one connection to Proctor Street? They don't own the land between their we property the and land. Proctor Street. The Bird family doesn't own this land at all? It's already been sold, not owned by the same people? Parcel that we purchased is not is not contiguous to the property because okay. it's described as zero Parker Street in one of the documents someplace. So right. I was got me thinking about it. So okay. they kept that piece. Yeah, the family wanted to keep that piece. Any other? 
other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you in a uh, couple weeks. A couple yeah. weeks, May 22nd. Thank you. Almost a month. Good luck, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Okay, let's. Uh, we have a few other things to kind of clean up. I had put the right turn lane onto Lumber Street. I was hoping to have a proposal today. Do you have a number? Uh, well, so late in the day, I received something from Beta, but I'm not sure if I was supposed to provide it or not. So well, I'll <laughs> let you look at it. <laughs> OK. Because I don't know what your conversation was with him, so I'm not going to do that. What he's got here. Well, I and I, I'm also not sure how much the scope has changed and if everybody who needs to know the scope changed knows the scope changed. Okay, why, why don't we leave it at this? We do have a revised proposal. It's closer to our budget than what we needed, but let's review it and have David and other folks review it to make sure that everyone's happy with the scope that's provided and we'll bring it up at our next meeting. Okay and uh, do that. Uh, next item is approve the minutes for March 22nd, 2017. Uh, does anyone other than myself have some changes? I've already talked to Kobe on it. I'll give my changes. On the Eversource discussion, uh, I want to add the words for an informal presentation to, they said they appeared to before the board, this is on page five, for an informal presentation. The second comment that I had is all the way on page eight, which is an addition that says the planning board did not take any position with regards to endorsing this project. And we didn't, and uh, that's Does it say we did? What? Does it say we did? We did not. And, and, uh, we just wanted to be clear about it. I wanted to be very clear about it because Eversource has a habit of saying, well, we appeared before the planning board and they were really supportive. Mm. <laughs> and they do that before the DP, DEP. And mm. They've done it to us several times. Interesting. And, uh, but we, we purposely did not take any positions. I second those changes. Okay. Okay, I'm looking for a motion if nobody else has any changes to accept the minutes as amended. So moved. So okay. Moved and seconded for the discussion. Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Any liaison reports, et cetera, that are there? Uh, no other real correspondence. There was one CBA notice of the hearing coming up. Uh, Invite everyone to come to town meeting on May 1st. Next Monday. Next Monday. It's going to be a Bring your popcorn. several day <laughs> process. Uh, the good part for the planning board is our articles, I think, start around item 32, which they didn't stick us on the far end of the thing for. Right in the middle. Right in the middle. Right in the middle. So I suspect we'll probably be hitting those on day two probably given where where it is. Um, Commissioner Boucher? Yeah, go ahead. The meeting tonight with the zoning yeah. advisory committee, what time did, do we know what time went on the agenda? Advisory for? committee? Uh, Zach, isn't that the meeting? Oh, Zach. No, 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 sorry, Concom. Concom, Concom. 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 sorry. Concom. Concom. Oh. Uh, We're meeting right now. 7.30, right here? Well, where? The high school. No, but what would the agenda item for? Uh, they were there, our business to be taken at any time. So they've already discussed it and they've... No, they've no, I, they, I talked to Don today and they might be getting to it probably in 10 minutes. So no, no, they're 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 adjourn. They're what? They took it first, they're already done. Oh, they're already done? They're already done. Oh, can you tell us what, what they did? <laughs> I don't really know what this means, but um, the conventional is uh, feasible but not likely approved. That's it. Well, we'll have to get some interesting <laughs> on that one. Mm. So <laughs> feasible, but feasible. not likely. They're saying it's feasible. Uh, so that's just coming from text. It was a from the people that were there. It was a very short meeting. It was very high level. Um, they acknowledged that they would need to go into review each each specific lot. 
Um, but okay. That's, that's that's all hearsay at this point. So I probably okay. Not appropriate for Sounds like it might be a slow process. No, maybe. Okay, well that's interesting feedback. Sure so and if you'd like to that go to 31 Chamberlain Street and discuss it with everyone that's at my house now, you're welcome to, <laughs> <laughs> to, to that to that point I'm I'm very Only glad four of you can go. Depend yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> to that point I, I wanna say thank you to the board for mm. waiting mm. and letting CONCOM deal with this issue rather than bring forth both timing at the same time. Um, and that was my my stance there on that was that we needed to find out what was going on and we still it's still happening so okay I'm looking for a motion to adjourn so move second move and seconded and further discussion seeing none how do you vote aye, aye. aye. opposed anyone anyway, abstain motion carries sorry I missed you guys Saturday yeah Frank where were you my bad I was traveling I where were you five no no um, <laughs> My daughter. I, I Good excuse. She was in France and I had to pick her up. Okay. You were missed. Okay. Thank you. Yeah.